Thank you so much to you like to the Soul and Squad Ministries. Please do so at the Bible Way Church of Asian app or at our website. So just feel free. If this has been a blessing to you, please join in with us. Thank you.
Just want to just thank the saints that are tuning in on Facebook, YouTube, over the internet. We just appreciate you taking out the time, carving out the time to worship with us at our 11 a.m. service. And again, we want to thank the praise team for those two wonderful selections. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those with your Bibles, you can turn with me to, well, before I go any further, I want to thank the Lord for my wife. Um, Sister Brown and my children, all five of them, thank the Lord for them, because I wouldn't be half the man that I am without their support, and I just want to praise God for that. Um, those with your Bibles, turn with me to Romans, the 14th chapter, and the 13th verse, and it reads as such, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. But judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall on his, in his brother's way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this morning. We thank you for your word that is, has gone forth, and it should not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you sent it out to do. Lord, we just thank you right now. Lord, I decrease that you increase, that you anoint these lips of clay, that I speak your word with Holy Ghost boldness, that it would be encouragement um, to those that has an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And when the ears are open, they are no longer just be hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Amen. Um, the Lord gave me don't judge on Wednesday night and this part two of don't judge and the subtitle is don't be a stumbling block or an obstacle don't be a stumbling block or an obstacle a stumbling block means an occasion for falling or moral embarrassment in other words, don't be that person that causes someone to fall. Or don't be that person that always wants to morally embarrass somebody else. And then obstacle, which also means occasion, means a snare. Stumbling block calls for error. In other words, don't be that snare. Don't be that one that set traps up. That one that, that wants to cause division. Don't be that one that always wants to um, uh, trap somebody. When you think of a snare, a trap. You know, when a hunter goes hunting, they set traps for their prey. Don't be that person that want to set a trap or snare um, to cause somebody to fall. Cause of error. In other words, causing somebody to stop doing good to do evil. Don't be that person that causes somebody to err in their way, err in the faith, uh, turn their backs on God. Don't be that person that, that is a stumbling block or an obstacle. Apostle Paul had to deal with this issue in, the, in chapter 2 of Romans. And it's unique. When he dealt with this issue in chapter 2, the issue in chapter 2 was judging, trying to make somebody do something that you're not willing to do. In other words, you, you're trying to make the Gentiles live by the word which you're not even living by. But then 
in chapter 14, he had to address this issue again. And the thing about it in chapter 14 we're going to discover is this time the issue is dealing with if somebody don't eat the things that you eat, you try to force them to do the things that you do. So now you being a stumbling block or you causing an obstacle to be in the way of believers' lives. So if they don't eat what you eat or they don't drink what you drink, then you become a snare to them. And you may cause them to err from their way. So Paul had to deal with this issue. But one thing I want you to understand that the church was well established by this time. But they still had to deal with this judgmental issue. And if we're not careful, we cannot allow that issue to have its free course in the church today. We got to destroy that seed soon as it lifts up its head. And I'm reminded of uh, the story my grandmother used to tell me. I was always used to ask, how are you able to keep your fruit fresh? And she said she always picked through the fruits daily to make sure that none is spoiled. Because if it's spoiled, then it will cause the other fruit around it to be spoiled. So what she had to do to keep the, the fruit fresh, she had to get away, throw away that spoiled fruit. Remember I say fruit. And, and today the church, we have, we, we have to make sure that we don't allow that judgmental seed to spoil the body of Christ. To cause division. Because when it attaches itself to somebody else, it always prey on those that are weak among us. That's why our job isn't to judge, but it's to encourage and to lift up. We must always be willing to encourage each other and lift each other up. And again I say, don't judge. This morning's topic is, don't be a stumbling block or an obstacle. The church has been well established at that time and is still dealing with this judgmental issue today. We cannot be afraid to keep addressing, addressing issues that arise in the body of Christ. We cannot let the enemy um, place seeds in our ground and, and we don't address it. We have to root those things up before they're allowed to bud. We have to address the issue. The Amplified Version puts it like this. Romans 14 and 13 says they're with me because just as God gave, given this to me, I'm going to give to you. Then let us not criticize one another another anymore but rather determine this not to put an obstacle or a stumbling block or a source of temptation in another believer's way. He says, then let us not criticize, judge is another word for criticize. Let us not judge one another anymore. He, he, he's setting it, and, and, and he's, you can tell the frustration in this. He, he, he has to deal with this issue because he don't need it rearing his ugly head up again because the church needs to grow, continue growing. We, we, he, he had to address this issue. He's saying, then let us not criticize one another anymore. No more. Just tell your neighbor, no more. Shall I judge? But rather determine this, not to put a, an obstacle or a stumbling block or a source of temptation in another believer's life. That means I have to be careful what I speak one to another. I have to be careful of the words that I use because if it's not encouraging, if it's not lifting up, then the best thing to do is keep my mouth shut 
and get on my knees and pray. We talking about edifying the church, not ourselves. The judgmental spirit became a stumbling block and an obstacle in the church when we allow them to linger. It causes division and separation in the body of Christ. Let me say that again. The judgmental spirit became a stumbling block and an obstacle in the church when we allow them to linger it can cause division and separation in the body of Christ. We can no longer again keep our mouth shut. We have to address these issues. We have to learn to encourage each other. We have to learn to love one another. We have to learn to speak life in each other's life. Tell your neighbor, don't be that stumbling block or obstacle. There are some people that pray on the weak in faith. Paul had to address this issue because there are some people that lie in wait and pray seeking whom they can devour. And we know who that is. Satan will use anybody that's willing to surrender their will to his. And we know that his job has not changed. He still want to kill. He still want to destroy and he still, mm. yes, Lord. He still want to take away that very relationship that we have in God. He wants control of our flesh, man. He wants us to do whatever that we want to do when we want to do it, with no ramifications. He wants us to not be concerned about our brother and sister in the faith. He's always looking to destroy any type of relationship that we have with God. Matthew 16 and 23, Jesus had to address Peter. Now Peter was just being acknowledged because only God could reveal this to you that I am the son of the true and living God. Then turn around, Jesus had to rebuke Peter. Let's go to the scripture and see just what is what he's talking about in that verse. Because I want to I want to paint the picture on why it's important that we don't judge and don't become that stumbling block. Verse 23 in Matthew 16, verse 23, and it reads as such. But he turned and said to Peter, Get you behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me, for you savor not, or you, or you understand not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. In other words, Peter was responding, he just was responding in the spirit, then he turned around and responded in the flesh. We have to guard against that fleshly nature. We cannot allow ourselves to get entangled again with the yoke of bondage. We have to rebuke those things at the root. We have to turn away from those things. And Jesus had to address this issue to Peter. Peter just got finished being praised. See how quick the enemy comes in? But the beauty about this, even though the enemy came in, God is still great. He still gives us grace. And he still gives us mercy. Hallelujah. When your flesh man is in control, you are pleasing your flesh. But when your spirit man is in control, you're pleasing the Lord. We must never forget to teach that. That should be something that we should have on repeat. You know what repeat is. When you want to see something that you enjoy so much and you just tap repeat. And then play it over again. We have to do that to ourselves occasionally. We have to press that inner repeat button. And, and say, you know, I'm no longer bound to this flesh, but I'm free in the spirit. This flesh will no longer dictate my relationship with God. Because his spirit lives in me. And since his spirit lives in me, I'm a walk by faith and not by sight. 
I'm allowing the words of God to flow free with me out of my mouth. Don't be that stumbling block. Don't be that obstacle. We must always continue to teach one another to not put our confidence in the flesh, but put our confidence in God's spirit that lives in us. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I must abide by the spirit. The enemy job, which I stated before, has never changed. Satan does not mind us hearing the word of God. Just don't become a doer of his word. He don't mind us being in position to hear. Just don't apply what you hear. Because when you apply what you hear, then you become a follower. And when you become a follower, then you are an example of the faith. See, what happens when you become a doer of the word, you now become an example. You become a light to others that's struggling to apply the word to their life. Now they can see the word of God manifesting itself in your life. That's why it's important that we don't judge. Because you don't know, once you judge, you take out that possibility to encourage that same person you judge. Or that same person you put putting an obstacle on or you're putting pressure on to do something that they're not ready to do yet. We got to be careful not to try to push people in positions that they're not prepared for. You have to go through the process that is designed. A planter do, do not plant a seed in the ground and expect a harvest the next day. The planter has to allow that seed to grow and bud and blossom and produce a fruit. Then you can enjoy the fruit of your labor. See, that's the thing that we forget to encourage each other about. This walk is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but to those who endure until the end. We must not be that stumbling block or obstacle to somebody that is seeking and desiring a closer walk with God. This is a faith walk. This is not a natural walk. Let me say that again. This is a faith walk. This is not a natural walk. Walk. Because if it's natural, then it's a flesh walk. But this, but if it's a faith walk, it's a spiritual walk. And then you know, in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Don't ever be afraid of the foundation that calls you to have faith. Don't be afraid of that foundation that calls you to believe. Don't be afraid of that foundation that got you to turn from your wicked ways to embrace the true and living God. Because when you, when you stand on that foundation that calls you to activate your faith, your faith grow. You grow in faith. When you grow in faith, you remain faithful. Let me say that again. The foundation that calls you to activate your faith causes you, when you stay in it, it causes you to grow in faith. And then when you grow in faith, it causes you to remain faithful. God is looking for us to remain faithful. He's looking for us to stand on that sure foundation, on that cornerstone. Jesus Christ is that true cornerstone. The, the builders rejected it, but God had it set in place from the foundation of the world that men, we shall be saved. He, he set it up just like that so no man can take credit for what he did. Only God can deliver us. That's why Paul, he used Paul to address the serious issue in the church because it, it creeped his head back up because it was causing people to walk away from their faith. 
It was causing people to turn their backs. It caused people to not even hear. You might say something good in the Lord, but because of your nasty attitude, because of the words that you use that's not building them up, not encouraging them, it causes them to walk away. But what God is saying is this. I need you to stop judging, but what I want you to really pray on is don't be that stumbling block. Don't be that obstacle that affects another believer's life. But be that encouraged, that one that is willing to speak a word of faith in their life. Plant the right seed, not the bad seed. Plant the good seed, not the wrong seed. Be that one that's willing to do it as the word says. And remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is the judge of us all. In Romans 14 and 17 says this. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink. It don't have anything to do what we feed this flesh man with or what we drink in the natural bit. It all has to do with what's going to help us grow spiritually. And these three things is what's going to help us grow spiritually. Because we, the first one is righteousness. Because we know the Lord, our Je the Lord Jesus Christ is our righteousness. And if he dwell in us, then that means we already have righteousness in us. But when we activate our faith, then we learn that this righteousness in us will cause us to have peace. Peace with each other. Peace with ones that don't know God, even peace with those that do know God. It causes us to have peace. The peace that the natural man can't comprehend. The peace that only God can give. Even when your body is racking with pain, God will give us peace. Even though your money may be acting funny, God will give us peace. Even though your friends are few, God will give us peace. This type of peace only you can get by God through his spirit. Then there's joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. A joy that you can't even compare or measure up to. Even when you're feeling down, he tends to give you joy. Even though you may feel like the whole weight of the world is against you, then when you look to the hills with come at your help, and all your help comes from the Lord, then you have that joy. As kingdom citizens, we must always mix faith with everything that we do. Let me say that again. As kingdom citizens, we must always mix faith with everything that we do. When we don't walk in doubt, and when we, we doubt, we fall and end up pleasing our flesh. As believers, we cannot allow doubt to be a part of our faith walk. We must allow the Spirit of God to grow in us like never before. If there's a time to stand, this is the time that we stand. Yes, we may, be, we may get weary on this journey. But the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to those that endure till the end. We cannot forget our obligation to God. We must present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. We cannot forget. It did not say judge. He's told us not to judge. It told us to love ye one another as Christ loves the church. We can't forget that. The Holy Ghost ties us to the kingdom of God. Let the Spirit of God do its work in our life.
to lead and guide us unto all truth. See what happens when we grow in faith. We don't have time to criticize somebody or beat somebody down. Then we start allowing the characteristics that God gives us when we trust him to be manifested in our lives. So when people see us, they say he's an encourager or she's an encourager. When they see us, they say he's always praying or she's always praying. When they see us, he'll say, whenever I'm going through something, they don't, they don't let me wallow in my mess. They always try to lift me out of my mess. That's what building the right type of relationship is all about. Spending time in God's word grows our faith in him. Tell your neighbor, spend time, spend time, spend time. Don't forget, our job is to cover and to encourage each other in the Lord. Let me say that again. Don't forget, our job is to cover and encourage each other in the Lord. Kill that judgmental spirit in the church. Destroy that bad seed. We must continue to grow in the faith. Tell your neighbor, grow neighbor, grow neighbor, grow neighbor. Grow in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Let me say it again. We must grow in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I stated that earlier. And again, I make this appeal in my closing. Don't be that obstacle, a stumbling block in another believer's life. Don't judge love. Don't judge love. Don't hate love. Don't tear down love. Encourage cover. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you because our hope is rooted and grounded in thee and thee alone. We trust you, Lord. We know that our faith, it started off small. But Lord, we became large faith walkers. We no longer concern just about ourselves, but we concern about each other. One of the greatest commandments that you gave is that we love ye one another. And to Lord, the Lord, today is the day that we do it and we get it right. We trust you right now. Your word shall not return to me void, but it shall turn to you void, but it shall accomplish what you sent it out to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Amen. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence, with exceeding joy to our only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, the mean and power, both now and forever. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you all for tuning in to our service today. And please feel free to cash app us, PayPal us, download our, our app, Bible Church Aiken, Bible Church of Aiken, South Carolina. Look us up on Facebook. Look us up on the web. We And feel free to send in your prayer requests. We, we'll be willing to pray with you, pray for you, and encourage you in the faith. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen.